Hello Universe, I'm Joey, and I'm here to talk about, in this case it's Star Trek Enterprise, my all-time favorite TV show. Recently I took a look at the Blu-ray, I've had it on DVD for a long time, and this is my video log, or vlog, about Star Trek Enterprise. As of the date, 2016-03-08. What has got my attention on this day of Thursday, March 8th of the year 2016? Uh, well, not that long ago, uh, well, uh, Ghostbusters is kind of in the news. There's the Blu-ray of Ghostbusters right here. Uh, let's see. I could talk about, here's a science fiction classic, Forbidden Planet on HD DVD. Now I'm thinking about Star Trek Enterprise. I had this Blu-ray for a while. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Star Trek Enterprise on Blu-ray. I finally got around to checking this out. Um, it's a pretty cool set. And uh, this is Star Trek Enterprise is my favorite TV show. House MD came close to being a show I'd like as much. But Star Trek Enterprise is my favorite television show ever. I had the DVD set for a long time. I still have it. Uh, and it's huge. It takes up a lot of space. I like the design of the, the packaging, but it takes up a crazy amount of space. Now, as opposed to this, this is actually, you know, you know a lot of discs. Normal, normal case like this. That's got kind of a reflective look to it. I, I normally expect to see the starship in a Star Trek series on the front, so that's a little unusual. Personally, I loved it for finally giving a canonical look at the early days of Star Trek. I mean, in the past, I liked it when novels and comic books took a look into the early days of Star Trek. But they weren't can canonical. They weren't canonical, or however I'm supposed to pronounce that. And so I finally got around to checking it out on Blu-ray. Well, listen to some of the new commentaries that weren't on the DVD version. And watching those old episodes again kind of brought back a lot of happy memories of, you know, 2001, 2002, back when season one of Enterprise was on TV, and I had become apathetic with Star Trek. Uh, the last season of Deep Space Nine, I found it to be kind of depressing. I loved the interconnected stories of Deep Space Nine, and that continued on really well into its final season. But for the most part, I found that last season, episode by episode, kind of a depressing season, though I liked the new Dax. I thought she was kind of a cool character. Uh, Voyager. Voyager never really did a whole lot for me one way or the other. At that time, before Enterprise came out, I was more into repeats of Babylon 5, enjoying Firescape and Andromeda. That was before Andromeda turned to crap. But Enterprise, I really liked. Right from the start, I was really impressed with it. Had a more real feeling than the other Star Treks. Um... First Contact, I really liked First Contact the first time I saw it, but unlike other Star Trek movies, other, most of the other Star Trek movies, I could watch them over and over again, even the ones that came after Star Trek First Contact, and still like them. But to me, First Contact, after the first time I watched it, each time I watched it afterwards, it just got more boring. It didn't have the same rewatchable characteristic that the other Star Trek movies had. To me, it was just another action movie. It just wasn't anything special. Except for the fact it did kind of give us a little bit of the origins of Star Trek. And I did enjoy the plot line on the planet with Zephyrin Cochran and, and uh, William Riker and Geordi LaForge. I did enjoy that aspect of it. And the Borg action scenes actually to me were kind of boring. But as a follow-up to First Contact, I really liked Enterprise. I loved Enterprise. My favorite TV show to this day date. Uh, seeing, seeing the pilot episode again, watching the commentary, it's interesting. Because that, that, the theme to Enterprise, like the opening theme, I loved the music for seasons one and two. A lot of people hated it. Uh, I, I didn't quite like the more rattly acoustic sounds of season three and season four. And I liked the lyrics. Faith of the Heart seems like a well, it's, you know, it's not like this superstitious-y, religious-y kind of faith. It's, you know, faith of the heart. The kind of faith that kind of works well with Star Trek. So I like the song, Faith of the Heart. I actually like the opening theme. Uh, uh, one improvement to season three and four was the fact they put the word Star Trek over the word Enterprise in the title of Star Trek Enterprise. I thought that looked better. Star Trek should have always been there. Uh, but, oh well. 
Uh, but I like the, the actual sound to Seasons 1 and 2 better. But I'm just rambling on about the theme, you know, who cares about the theme? But it is kind of interesting in the commentary. One commentary, they talked about how they liked the theme, even though it was controversial. And then in the other commentary, the new commentary, somebody said, you know, if we had a better theme song, I think the opening theme would have been more popular, because the imagery is really great in this opening theme. And somebody else was, well, I didn't mind the opening theme. I thought, you know, like, like you could hear them, like, debating, you know, was it a good theme, was it a bad theme, it was an unpopular theme. He's like, well, I like the theme, you know, sort of thing. And I always really liked this series. Um, little things about it, the early days of Warp Drive. Uh, the NX-class Starship was, and is, probably my favorite Starship. I really like the design of the ship episode one, the, the first episode, all they have online are the, the plasma turrets, the little plasma pulse weapons, which are a fairly low energy, not very advanced earth weapon, the best they had at the time before they came out with uh, uh, the phase cannons. And some people thought, phase cannons? Well, that's phasers. Phasers aren't supposed to be invented yet. But the phasers were supposed to be a phased energy rectification weapon, which means the beam is made of yeah, that alone doesn't really describe the all that much about the beam. Uh, but phased energy rectification is completely different than phased energy modulation, and the phase cannons were basically phase modulated, which something they they are something entirely different, and they're often uh, described as low energy. Particle beam weapons, at least described that way by the Klingons, who have far more advanced weapons. Perhaps that could be enhanced by somehow adding a laser to further charge up and energize uh, the, the the particle stream. Because, you know, photons can excite electrons, and there's going to be an electron content to a particle beam that's made out of plasma, unless you totally remove the electrons from the stream. But I don't know. Um... Uh, phase cannons were not extremely well explained, but th that's just how I picture them. They, they, I assume that they take plasma energy, they would work kind of like a, or be powered up kind of like a plasma cannon would be, but they just turn the plasma not into a pulse, but into a high powerful stream. And theoretically, adding a laser to that, you could make it a more high energy stream, so that could explain the advancement of laser weapons in Star Trek, and could make a better phase pistol. Uh, yeah, I like the phase pistols. I thought they were kind of a cool science fiction-y thing. Um, and actually, uh, I didn't get a good look at it, and I'm not super interested in that whole new Ghostbusters movie that's coming out around you know, this summer. But, you know, the proton pistols, which might be inspired by Kylie Griffin's gun in Extreme Ghostbusters. Now, Extreme Ghostbusters, I really liked Extreme Ghostbusters. Yeah. Um, Kylie Griffin's gun in Extreme Ghostbusters. Or it could have also been inspired by, in the original movie script, the Ghostbusters are going to have a proton blaster strapped to each hand. But, uh, yeah, I always like the... I'm not that big into gun-like weapons, but ever since I watched Ghostbusters as a kid, I liked the thought of particle beam weapons, energy, subatomic particles, and Star Trek Enterprise gave me the phase pistols, which did seem to be more of a traditional particle beam weapon than phasers were. But phasers were pretty cool. I like phasers. Uh, and it is a predecessor to the phaser. So I finally got around to checking out Star Trek Enterprise on Blu-ray. I had watched a little bit of it on, on Blu-ray before. I bought the DVD the first day the DVD was released. The first day that Star Trek Enterprise was released, I drove to the Walmart in Andy Ganesh and bought a copy of Star Trek Enterprise on DVD as soon as Season 1 was released. And then later I collected the other seasons as they came out. Not immediately on the first day, but the first day Season 1 of Star Trek Enterprise was released on, on DVD, I got it. I was a little slower to get the Blu-ray, but I had the Blu-ray actually for a couple years now. Was it a couple years or was it just a year? I'm not sure. But it's only recently I got around to really watching very much of it. Brought back a lot of good memories. Uh, the science of Star Trek can complement other science fiction universes. Uh, like 
uh, maybe Star Wars, Stargate, Babylon 5, you know, treat it as a parallel universe. Um, sometimes I think where the phase pistols are, people don't, people treat the phase pistols as if they're phasers often, but I think the, the blaster technology of Star Wars might actually be closer to the, to the phase pistols, I don't know, something about this creates a, energizes a plasma beam, then discharges that plasma energy, transforms it into a particle beam, and there's the a little power cell that, or the phase pistols, and there we go, um, uh, stun settings and the more dangerous deadly settings on a simple switch, so there are other ways to adjust it, but two basic settings. I absolutely love Star Trek Enterprise. It's still my favorite show of all time. House MD came close to me liking it almost as much. Uh, I also really loved Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine. I uh, really loved Babylon 5. I'm a big fan of the real Ghostbusters and Extreme Ghostbusters, as I recently just mentioned those. And here's that. It's actually I've got it wrapped in plastic to, you know, even minimize the wear and tear as I pull it off the shelf. But yeah, the real Ghostbusters. Uh, a lot of TV shows I really loved, but my all-time favorite is Star Trek Enterprise. And there's the NX-01 on the back. My favorite starship. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and hopefully you'll enjoy some other videos of me talking about the universes portrayed within science fiction, video games, or comic books. You can feel free to check out some of my other videos.